Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're tuning in from. Um, hey, this is Tom Zabo. I'm a staff solutions architect at VMware. Today, we are going to be delving into VMware Identity Manager and specifically upgrading to 3.3.7. So just to give you a little background, VMware Identity Manager is included with the Realize Automation, um, now known as ARIA Automation. Essentially, it's the component that handles access and authentication. So if let's say you wanted to tie ARIA Automation into your Active Directory or um, an LDAP directory that you have, you would use the Identity Manager to tie into AD, pull in groups or users, and then essentially present them to ARIA Automation and you can control from there what projects they belong to, what roles they're assigned to, um, and basically their level of access. So this came about, I was having a conversation with one of my customers and they noticed that there was a 337 upgrade available, available inside of their V-Realize Lifecycle Manager. They were asking me for some feedback on, you know, what it would take to do an upgrade. If I had done an upgrade, I hadn't. And I realized in my lab, I was still at 336 as well. So I figured I would walk through the process to see if there are any caveats, anything that I should call, call out to the, my, you know, to that customer. And I figured why not uh, do a recording for anybody else that might be interested in doing the upgrade and how it works. So with that, let's just jump in. So first, you know, step one always, whenever you're doing any kind of upgrade or install, you know, really is hit the documentation, right? Look at, you know, release notes, any particular instructions on how to do the install, how to do the upgrade. So here I put together a list of different documents that would make sense to spend a little bit of time reviewing prior to doing the upgrade. I will include these in the video notes so you can have access to them. And we'll take a look at a few of these um, in just a second. But but realistically, what I have here is, you know, instructions on how to do the upgrade via LCM, some prerequisites. So one of the things that is really happening behind the scenes here is, is we're converting from VMware Identity Manager to VMware Workspace ONE Access. So um, yeah, essentially the Identity Manager was part of Workspace ONE. We borrowed it in the Cloud Management Business Unit to handle our um, our, our sign-on capabilities. So one of the caveats I noticed when I was re going through the release notes for 337 was you have to be aware of disk space. There is this, you do need to have a, a certain amount of disk space. Um, you basically want at least 10 gigs of free space on the root drive. Um, more is totally acceptable as well. So there is an article on how to increase disk space. I did have to do this in my environment. I did not have quite enough disk space on my appliance. I'll show you how you can check that. Um, I also did have a network not found error when I was when I initially kicked off the upgrade. Essentially what was happening there is the, uh, the, the VIDM is a, a virtual appliance that gets deployed. And during one of the upgrade cycles, um, some of the OVA properties were missing from the appliance itself for whatever reason they were removed. So th there's some steps to put them back if there is the problem. I was able to just reboot and they came, you know, just verify that everything was there and, and everything was um, where I would expect them to be, but just included that for your reference. Um, some troubleshooting. So Elasticsearch is a component of Identity Manager, one of the services inside of it. If it has a problem prior to the upgrade, it's something that you want to look into so that we do have some details on troubleshooting. And then we have some additional release notes on the product support pack of LCM that supports this 337 upgrade. Um, some, some background on the product support packs is essentially as VMware releases new versions of a particular product, let's say, you know, ARIA Automation 8.10, we release PSPs, product support packs, to make LCM aware of, of new releases that are out there so that it can, um, you know, interoperate with the new releases and be able to upgrade existing components. All right, so now, Jumping into my environment, you can see uh, my lifecycle manager is open. I have my my lab components here where I have my different ARIA um, suite components that are under management. And then every environment, every uh, lifecycle manager will have a global environment. And this is where the identity manager actually sits. 
um, outside of the lab itself. So um, we'll take a look at this in a minute. Just wanted to call out a couple other quick things. This is that network not found error after upgrading. So like I said, essentially the, uh, the OVF properties are missing. Um, you know, there's basically just some, you know, you can shut it down, edit the, the V app options inside of vCenter and then reboot it. And the, um, you know, the network should come up successfully and we, we should see everything. Um, how to increase disk space. It's actually, it seems more comp complex than it really is. It's relatively straightforward to add disk space. Definitely a good idea to take a look at release notes. There's the product support pack notes that I was mentioning, um, lifecycle manager release notes, prereqs for upgrading from 336 to 337. One of the things that ha that's happening is we're replacing Elasticsearch with OpenSearch during the process, which is why um, you know you want to confirm that Elasticsearch that the health overall is in good shape prior to doing this. Uh, some troubleshooting if if there is a problem and you need to dig in and understand what's going on from an Elasticsearch perspective. And then this is just more um, directions on how to upgrade. So we have plenty of documentation that's available. Like I said, I will put it in the show notes for this video. Um, so now jumping into my identity manager, there is a dashboard, um, a system di systems diagnostic dashboard, which can give you a great deal of information and just you know, a good place to just take a look and make sure everything is checking out and running as you would expect. Um, we could see my root drive here. I have, I'm only using 5% of the disk. So we have plenty of disk space there. Um, you could easily just check in vCenter, connect to the console, SSH to the appliance, do um, you know, a DF-H -dash -dash and just make sure that you have enough disk space, at least 10 gigs free. Um, and, and maybe you even wanna consider having 20 gigs free on your root drive. All right, so now coming back into LCM, we will jump into my global environment here. Um, you can see here's my identity manager, some different details about it, in case you know for some reason you have forgotten its uh, IP address or anything along those lines. Um, from here, we can click upgrade. Oh, and by the way, I should call out before we do this, um, prior to doing any of that, I went through the normal process of pulling down any binary mappings. Um, so you could pull down the bits right through uh, Customer Connect with an integration inside of LCM. So you can see I have my Identity Manager 337 upgrade bits um, sitting inside of my LCM already ready to go. So coming in here, we can click Upgrade because we do have an upgrade available. You will need to trigger an inventory sync. I, even if it didn't force you to do this, I would recommend it simply because what it does is it forces LCM to go out and understand the current state of whatever system it's trying to work with. In this case, VIDM. Uh, it'll make sure that you know SSH access is enabled. What you know the 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 service account that it's using to hook in has access. Sometimes what I found, especially in my environment, because I sometimes neglect my lab for long periods of time, sometimes a password will expire um, or it's flagged to, to change on the next login. So by triggering an inventory sync, that it'll surface those types of issues prior to the upgrade kicking off. So I always recommend doing this one way or the other. It should be done um, in a few more seconds. I'm going to just pause the recording just so we're not wasting time. Okay, as you can see, my inventory sync completed successfully. It only took about 30 more seconds after I paused the video. So we're going to click proceed. And now what's going to happen is a typical LCM workflow is going to start to um, populate essentially where, you know, all right, hey, we can see inside of the LCM repo, I've got those 337 bits ready to go. Um, I'm not going to, this isn't going to show me much for this particular upgrade from a compatibility perspective. So I'm not going to bother with it, but I do like that you can typically see compatibility right within LCM just to make sure you're not getting ahead of, um, you know, any product versions where interrupt starts to become an issue. We're going to take a product snapshot as part of the upgrade process. I like that we can, you know, again, this is just part of the overall workflow. It just takes the um, one less thing to worry about or to think about as far as your process, and you can retain the product snapshot. Um, 
after the upgrade. What LCM will typically do if this is checked here, it'll take a snapshot, do the upgrade. If everything checks out, it'll then commit the snapshot for you. So you don't have to worry about it, which is a really nice part of the workflow. However, with certain upgrades, it can sometimes make sense to leave the snapshot around just so you have enough time to go in there and do some um, product testing of your own, just make sure everything is, is acceptable from an upgrade perspective. Um, so in this case, we're gonna leave this unchecked because I'm, I, I, I really, I don't need to go in and make sure this is either gonna work or it's not. Click next. Um, we're gonna run a validation check. So we're gonna go ahead and rerun the pre-check because I've run it prior. That's where I determined, that's where I learned that I had that network issue with my OVA properties. It should hopefully be cleared up now. Yep, okay, we could see all my validations passed. So I was able to SSH in, um, I have enough disk space. So again, it, what I really like about LCM is the fact that we do run these pre-checks prior to doing upgrades. So rather than having an upgrade start and then fail, um, it's not a foolproof process, things can still go wrong but we do a good job of running through various requirements prior to kicking off um, an upgrade and, and it saves quite a bit of time and I've, I've had a, a significant amount of success you, you know, doing upgrades since I started using LCM, oh, I don't know, about a year and a half or two years ago now. And you can call out, uh, you can see here, it's actually calling out that IDM, the IDM should have uh 120 gigs of disk space which is quite a bit um i have but i have more I'm, I'm i'm all set here i should be good to go click next and we are going to kick off the upgrade now by clicking submit so you can see my the you know that workflow wizard is taking all of my set all of my choices and starting to run a workflow to upgrade vidm so i'm going to pause the recording right now this shouldn't take too long but rather than watching it run, um, I will start it back up after it completes the different stages. And you can see here, you know, first step, all right, we're shutting down my VIDM manager. We're gonna create the snapshot, gonna power it on, you know, do the remediation. In this case, we'll be doing, you know, the upgrade. I'm actually starting to do the upgrade. The remediation will probably be more prepping for the upgrade than anything else. And it should take a little while, but I'll, like I said, I'm going to pause the recording now and I'll come back when it's, when it's finished. All right. So as you can see here, um, the upgrade process completed successfully walk through all the stages of the workflow. And if we come back to environments, we should see I'm running 337. Reopen these. And if we come here, we can log in and make sure everything looks okay. Take a look at the administration console. back to that systems diagnostics dashboard that we were looking at earlier. And you can see, I, I think I actually forgot to scroll down um, prior to the upgrade, but now instead of Elasticsearch, we've got OpenSearch inside of my environment. And one last test, just to make sure everything is working properly. I go to my ARIA automation appliance. Oh, and I logged in automatically as my the same user I had logged into VIDM. So let me just sign out. I'm gonna log in with an, one of my Active Directory users just to make sure everything is working properly. There we go, authentication works. I am a happy camper and I am now running 3.37 inside of my environment. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or you know comments on the the content, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thanks a lot, and have a good one. Talk to everyone soon.